Well, praise the Lord. Here we go rapidly into the word of God, violently, quickly, with a thunderous shout of victory and power and authority given to us by the Lord Jesus Christ. I am your brother, servant in the Lord, friend, and fellow warrior in the fight, Apostle Rose Brown, greeting you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Blessed always to be in your presence, knowing that we got the victory. I want to step into this uh, and read to you a very powerful passage uh, in the book of Isaiah. Uh, I want to read Isaiah chapter 53. Uh, let's start with verse 4, okay? <clears throat> now I'm going to start with verse 3, 53. He is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows, and acquainted with grief. <clears throat> and we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised, and we esteemed him not. Surely he hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him, stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. All we, like sheep, have gone astray. We have turned every one to his own way, and the Lord hath laid upon him the iniquity of us all. Oh, my God. Surely he has borne our griefs and carry our sorrows. And the Lord, the Lord bruised him. The Lord, the Lord took Jesus and allowed Jesus to be afflicted for us, allowed us to be allowed us to be crucified in him without experiencing crucifixion. Allowed us to be put to death in him without experiencing the pain of death allowed us to be sick in his body, allowed him to take every pain and sickness in his body and allowed us to be sick in him. So guess what? We don't need to be sick today. We don't need to be sick today. The Lord was cursed. The scripture says, cursed is he that hangs on a tree. The Lord hung and died and was afflicted for every ill that we were doomed to experience because of our sin. Those ills have been eradicated under the blood of Jesus. And now we stand today as free men, sanctified, justified, and purified by the blood of Jesus. Now, I want to say something to you. He's borne our griefs in verse 4 and carried our sorrow Yet we did esteem him, stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. Do you know men are still esteeming Jesus as stricken of God? Whatever God they think rules, they are looking at Jesus as being unacceptable. And I'm going to tell you, this is why the world is lying in mass destruction all over the world. Crazy foolishness. Kids killing kids, kids killing their parents, parents killing kids, people who should be covering children, molesting them. Because we are not esteeming the Lord Jesus as our Savior. We are not esteeming him as God's precious own son with the authority and power to heal and save everyone in the world. Now here's the clarion call. The gospel of the kingdom is here to stay. And the ruling thought in the land until the Lord returns will be the words that come out of the mouths of the saints of God. Yeah. See, for too long now, bad news, evil tidings, mm -hmm. wicked men, have set the tenure for what is truth in the earth, for what is believed in the earth, 
for what is followed in the earth. But I'm telling you now, I'm excited as I make this video because a new sheriff is in town. The righteous are as bold as a lion. And we stand as the truth and according to the words of Jesus as the light of the world. The light of the world. If you're a believer, whether you call yourself a Christian, son of God, faith walker, if you're a believer in Jesus Christ, then take up your position as the light of the world. Take up your position as the salt of the earth. According to the Apostle Peter, our dear brother, who walked with Jesus, take up your position as a king, a priest, a holy royal nation, a peculiar people. And don't let it go for anything. Don't let anybody tell you what the truth is if it does not line up with the words and the historical accounts of this Savior that was prophesied, this Messiah that was prophesied, this child that was born and then rose up to be a man doing miracles, signs, and wonders, and finally coming to the cross and dying to redeem the world. And we are redeemed now. It's too late. The devil can't take it back. That's why he's fighting so much. Now, I know that as I'm making this tape, some of you are dealing with trials and tribulations right now. Horrible things in your life, horrific things in your life right now that would make what I'm saying seem like a fairy tale and a fable and unreal. But I am here to tell you that it is the realest thing in all creation and receive this and not just receive it from me. You heard me quote the scripture, Isaiah 53, verse 3, down to verse 6. You read it, and you saturate it in your spirit, and you agree with the God that created you. Because he did not create you a victim of anything that's happening in this earth. Now, I know I'm talking to somebody. I know I'm talking to somebody because right now, I see the devil running around in my life like a sissified, scared little, I won't say it, but <laughs> running around like a sissified, scared little, and he is on a termination yeah. treadmill toward hell yeah. and the lake of fire, Absolutely. and he knows it, Absolutely. he knows it, and I'm here to tell you, and I'm happy to report to you that he is afraid of the Christ in you. Hallelujah. He's afraid Hallelujah. of the word of God you. in you. He's afraid of the revelation that you are covered by a Savior who was put to shame, put to misery, afflicted, scourged, and put to death to buy you back your royal authority as a son of God. Yes, you are. Today, you are son of God. The scripture says in John, beloved, now are we the sons of God. And it does not appear what we shall be, but we know that when he shall appear, we shall see him as it is and we shall be like him. Now, I'm telling you, when you see what Jesus has done for you, you are on your way to seeing yourself like him. See, when Jesus died to save you, when he was afflicted and scourged in your place, here's what he did. It's very simple. It's not complicated at all. Don't let devils or foolish, ungodly people complicate it for you. He just did an exchange. That's all. He just did an exchange. He has the power to do it. The complicated thing was already done. He created you. So to get you back wasn't hard. See, that's why the devil works now at your understanding of justification by faith. See, that's why the devil works hard at your uh, propensity to fall into sin. Hey, don't worry about that. Falling into sin is like having fleas. Eventually, you get you a flea collar or some spray or a bath that get rid of them little niggas. See what I'm saying? So, you are... The righteousness of God in Christ Jesus right now. You just need to be told so you can identify yourself. And see, once you identify yourself, now you're in line with your check that needs to be cashed. 
And that check needs to be cash and the return on it needs to be the kingdom. The kingdom and an experience where you're walking down here on earth victorious yes. until you get a new body. Yes. A brand new body that can never die again. Yes. So I'm talking to you right now, right. my loved ones, because I know you're struggling right now. I know there's some things in your life right now that don't seem like God is with you or even hears you. I know it. And you play this tape over and over again because the nature of the devil, a fallen angel, I always use lowercase letters when I write his name. I have no respect or fear of him because Christ is in me and greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. But see, I'm talking to you now. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. So I want you to watch this video, watch any of my other videos, because they all going to tell you how victorious you are. And I want you to see how you are justified and redeemed and how that the things that are happening in your life now are happening because you are a threat mm -hmm. to the kingdom of darkness. Right. Because the day that you were conceived in the mind of God, mm -hmm. all heaven knew it. And when Satan fell to the earth, his fear is anyone, anyone here knowing who they are, because if they know who they are, they'll know who he is and who he isn't. He's called the prince of the power of the air because he's an underling that manipulates the influence in the air, but he is not the king. The king is Christ Jesus. And the king under him is you. Yes. You. Oh, this is the gospel of the kingdom. Yes. This is the gospel of the mind of the king. And the mind of the king was to position you not as a victim, not as a Job, not as a person who is always beat down and has a life filled with trouble, with no remedy but to cry and pray. No, your troubles and your trials are only opportunities for your exaltation and expression of the God in you. This is simple truth. You don't have to go to seminary to study it. All you have to do is look at that exchange. That exchange. Now, if you don't believe in Jesus, and if you believe that his story is a fairy tale, or his death, even if you believe he walked around, and you believe he was just a man that died because he was the head of an insurrection that was trying to overthrow Rome or Jerusalem, then you don't benefit from the truth. But if you believe Jesus, simply believe him. You know what? You don't even have to study to believe him. If you simply believe him, if you simply hear this word and simply believe him, your studying will bring you more knowledge and more confidence, but your simply believing him yes. will turn on the switch yes. of power in you that will cause you to rise triumphantly over everything in this life that is lying against the truth that you are redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Jesus. And if you're redeemed, then that loved one that's struggling with cancer right now Hallelujah. is healed. Hallelujah. Yes. Did you hear me? Hallelujah. If you're redeemed, then that bank account that's looking low. I know you little spooky devils who are scared of hearing the word prosperity. Well, you need to get on the altar and get delivered. Because God ain't into poverty and loss on no level. When he said salvation, he meant everything. You sitting around here trying to be excited about a ticket to heaven. Yes, I'm excited. Probably more excited than you. Because I know that I got heaven made. I got an eternity where I'm going to have a new body where none of this stuff is going to yeah. plague me. But I also know that I am here to see when it shows up in my life and to show my face up in its existence and plague it. And I mean, I will plague every trouble that attempts to plague me because, as we said earlier, greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Trouble in the world. Trouble all over the world. But in you is the one who created the world. Who created the world and watches the world travail in pain. Watches all creation groan in pain waiting for you to come forth as the healer of the world. Michael Jackson said it better than anybody I know. Heal the world. Make it a better place for you and for me 
and the entire human race. There are people dying. If you care enough for the living, make a better place for you and for me. Amen. Now, there are people dying, and I care for the dying and the living. And I'm ready, and I want you to be ready to make this place what God wants it to be. It's on you. It's on you. See, we're here to run rough shot on the devil. I'm speaking to give somebody some confidence today because that broke so-and-so is running around here with a costume on like he's the winner. Yeah. That broke so-and-so is running around here with a sweatshirt on like he's the bully. And he ain't even a real bully. He's a fallen angel and he's your servant and you need to send that dog back to the pit of hell every morning you wake up by resisting him. Because when you do that, the book says he will flee. Yes. Resist the devil and he will flee. Getting sick and tired of these people running around here taking the truth of the gospel away from people. All of you, you need to shut up and come and sit down and listen to the truth. Any of you think you're wise and you got a problem with Jesus. Any of you think you're wise and you got a problem with the Bible. You need to sit down and listen to the truth because you're slitting your throat every day you reject what saves you. Jesus died to save you and he don't care about your opinion. He don't care about whether or not you believe in him. Your belief in him is for you. It ain't for him. Jesus is not trying to win a contest on Star Six, The Voice, or So You Think You Can Dance. Jesus is the King of kings and Lord of lords. And it would do you well to believe him. And if you don't believe him, then you need to shut up speaking unbelief to people because their blood is going to be on your hands if you're walking around repeating lies and falsehoods that you don't even know about. Now, I'm here violently standing and telling you the reign of the devil is over. It ended at the cross. It ended at the cross. Jesus tricked him into sending him into death and Jesus stepped into the abyss of hell and took what belonged to you. Damnation, punishment, fire, tribulation, and a second death. Jesus came and died and then he came and took the second death. The second death that some men are racing toward. The second death is the death that you experience if you go into eternity Christless. Jesus took it. And I'm telling you, Jesus is a bad father for you. Yeah, you say, oh, he cussed. No, a bad father for you. Jesus is a bad father for you. Because he went in there, he took the first death. He said, no man takes my life. I lay it down of myself. And if I lay it down, I have the power to pick it up again. And then after he laid that life down, he went down into hell. And he came back up. Took the keys of death and hell away from the devil. So while the devil is walking around masquerading like he has the power to bring death, you put that dog on check, put him in a leash, and then take that leash and swing it around and like someone who's in the Olympics doing the, what's that thing called? The hammer throw, take it and throw it into the abyss of hell and in the lake of fire and run him up out of your life every day. This is the power that you have in Jesus. This is the power that is in you right now. And ain't no more time to be timid about this. It ain't no more time to be afraid of this. Mm -hmm. Ain't no more time to worry about no any of these internet programs that don't like your message mm -hmm. so they give you a hard time getting your message out. Mm -hmm. Ain't got no more time for none of that. You ain't got no more time for none of these courts and laws and anything that they're going to do. And this is a message to band the saints together with confidence. So we can take what is rightfully ours, the kingdom of God. We don't want nobody's money. We don't want nobody's uh, buildings. We don't want nobody's car. We don't want nobody's fake fame and notoriety. We want what is ours, the kingdom of God. And I'm going to tell you this now. It ain't going to have to be no selling chicken dinners and rallying and getting people all riled up. See, I do this much. I rile you up like this. But I'm telling you, before I even got here, I prayed. I prayed. 
before I even say anything to you, I pray. And see, that's something that ungodly men don't do because they don't know how to pray. All they know how to do is frantically grab, harm, and scare and hope that they get lucky and keep being able to satisfy their sensual desires. Oh, what a terminated position to be in. Terminated position to be in. The saints of God rule the earth. Yeah. Now, now look, I'm here to tell you that. I'm here to tell you that today. No matter what's going on in your life, you're a ruler. You're a ruler. You're not broke. That's right. Your loved one is not sick. If you land somewhere on a sick bed, you're not sick. I speak to you now. Rise up and be healed in the name of Jesus. Surely he has borne our griefs. Verse 4 of chapter 53 of Isaiah. And carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. But, verse 5, he was wounded for our transgressions. In other words, he was beat, cut, bruised, and sliced for our sins. He was bruised for our iniquities. He was busted, broke, and swollen for our sins. And the chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed, not will be healed, not may be healed. We are healed now. And I'm telling you, rise up in the name of Jesus from your sick bed. Rise up from your poverty. Rise up from your fear. Rise up from your debt. Rise up for you. Yeah, I ain't forgot every debt that you got into. That you didn't know what you were doing. Don't matter what the credit card companies are sending you. Don't matter what the judges and the courts are trying to do to you. You are released from every debt in the name of Jesus. I speak it by power and authority of the word of God. This is our heritage. And we will prevail. I'll read that to you a little bit later too. Now, for some of you that say these videos are a little too long, well, watch them in sections, but you need to watch them. Because you watch a two-hour movie yeah. that don't do nothing but fill you with sexual tendencies or make you angry about somebody that's doing something unjust. Or you can sit down and watch a marathon of crime dramas where they're showing you nothing but dead bodies and you can't see no hope. The person is dead and who murdered me? My blood is crying out. No, watch this. Yes. Watch it. If you have to break it up in five minute sections, do it. But watch it. Because you need something in you now that will position you to get about your life. And start doing what God has called you to do. And quit living in reaction to things that evil, ignorant, selfish men are doing. Evil, ignorant, selfish men. Psalm 37. Fret not yourself against evildoers. That seem to Ooh. prosper in their way. On, For they will soon be, be cut, cut off. off. Hallelujah. Don't fret yourself to do evil. Don't worry about them. It's evil to worry about them. Yes. Don't worry about them. That's right. Don't worry about them. I don't care what they're saying. See, it's been about 57 years for me in July. Okay? And one thing I'm seeing, and I'm seeing very clearly now. I'm seeing this very clearly. I am seeing how the enemy uses your lust and your power and your influence against you. The ability to worry yeah. Yeah, he does. is nothing more than the ability to be confident and think clearly perverted right. and twisted. See, when you worry about something, you're thinking about trouble with detail. And then you get creative with it. You start working with the devil and creating scenarios. What if they hit me in the head? What if they put me in jail? What if it don't get better? What if I lose all my teeth? What if they t t beat my kids up? What if they kill? And then you start getting detail. And you start painting images in your mind that convince you that, oh, I'm in a bad way. I need Jesus. Well, anybody that needs Jesus don't realize that they got him. Right. So your only problem is your 
energy is being perverted. It's being twisted. Now, all you got to do is get enough of the word and you get enough of the truth and you get enough of the understanding in you that somebody took your place. Somebody did that simple exchange and made it possible for you to succeed and be victorious every day of your life, no matter what the circumstances. All you got to do is get that in your head and then you start taking that creative energy and creating scenarios in your mind that make you happy. Yes. yes. Oh, you just making it up as you go along. No. Well, you know what? I better be. <laughs> because if I don't make it up as I go along, I'm going to eat what somebody else made up as they go along. Right. Uh-huh. See, everything that is against you was made up by a man inspired by the devil. So, if it's telling you that you have failure and, and, and calamity and death and sickness and poverty in your future, then it was made up as they went along. Oh, yes, it was. I don't care how long it's been going on. It was made up as they go along. And I'll tell you why I say it was made up as they went along. Get uh, Jeremiah uh, 29. Uh, verse 11. Very favorite, simple passage of mine. Yeah. That was in our last video. Watch them videos. Watch them videos. I want no money from you. I ain't selling no tickets. You watch them videos. Look, y'all. It's some of y'all, y'all my age, and even y'all younger. It's time to get rolling. It's time to get rolling. I'm not on Facebook so I can, you know, have a lot of friends and, uh, do a bunch of nothing even though we're all tempted to do nothing and we all waste time some of you I love you but I, I you send me games and the slot games and I don't respond and I, I, I'm, I'm happy to see you there and I'm happy you want to play games with me but uh, I just don't have time and it's nothing against you or it's nothing saying anything against you but you guys what burdens me is how the world is famished for the word of God yeah. Even in Christian circles. I'm not saying all Christians and all believers, but we're famished for the word of God. Yeah. We don't know who we are. We don't you ask some of us what the kingdom of God is, and we don't know and I'm not saying I know all the details of the kingdom of God, but the message to seek the kingdom is not a popular, understood, consistently preached message right. in the church. And it's what the Lord wants us to have. And I'm telling you now, if the message of the gospel of the kingdom was preached, these devils wouldn't be running around That's doing all right. this stuff they're doing. That's right. They wouldn't run around it. I'm telling you, I'm saying this to you now. The age of martyrs, men dying for the gospel in a free nation like this, it's over. Yeah. It's over. And you, some of you brothers, you need to step up with fear. Some of you, you got churches. You won't tell people things you know. Because you're scared you'll lose members or lose popularity. And you got to understand something. You got an appointment with God. You ain't got an appointment with none of these peoples that can bring you some fake consequences. You got an appointment with God that can bring you into judgment because someone conned you and caused you not to see your senses. While you dealing with consequences... Someone con you out of seeing your senses. You are supposed to be a proponent of the light and the gospel of the kingdom that Jesus preached. And people are suffering. Now look at Roman, I mean Jeremiah 29, 11, in light of the statement that men uh, I make up stuff as I go along. You better know what I do. I do. One passage told me, uh, Jesus says to the twelve, when you're brought before magistrates and they're looking at you, threatening to take your life, don't even think about what you're going to say. Don't be concerned what you're going to say. Make it up as we go along. You bet I do. I made up little rules as I went along. Yeah, I was doing what came naturally for me as I went along with his mama and boom. I'm walking around, and she got a big belly. God is in me. And if 
I don't make it up as I go along. Somebody going to keep making up stuff for me that I'm going to have to go along with. Mm -hmm. You better get real and get right. Not with your sins and the things you're doing. With the identity of who you are because of what Jesus did. Making it up as we go along. Jeremiah 29, 11. Let's start at verse 10. Thus saith the Lord, that after 70 years be accomplished at Babylon, I will visit you and perform my good word toward you and causing you to return to this place. Now you got to remember during Jeremiah's time, the children of Israel were outcast. They were in um. They were in, in trouble, and they were in exile. They had been driven out of their land. And God told them after a 70-year period, they would be restored to their land. Ten times the number of completion, they're purged. They are repositioned, they're chastised. They're driven out of their own land. And then he says in verse 11, Because I know the thoughts that I think towards you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. Now, here's my point, my loved ones. If you are experiencing a life that is handing you things that don't agree with the fact that God knows what your life is all about. He saw you in your mother's womb. He saw you before you even had a mama. You were in his mind, in the spirit. And his determination for your life was love, peace, success, and a bright future that stretched into eternity. If you are being handed things that don't agree with that, well, guess what? When you come out with things that agree with that, you ain't making nothing up. You're mm -hmm. speaking against what was made up over your life yeah. before God spoke. And so on that, on that note, I say to you, if it makes you happy and if it gives you hope in God, make it up. Yeah. Make it up and you will be surprised when you step out in faith and start speaking your faith and start speaking that you're redeemed. You will be surprised that God is standing there waiting for you. About five miles down saying, I was wondering when you start saying that. <laughs> because that's the authority and that's the heritage of the saints of God. Yeah. And that's why the devil is trying to take this from you. I wish I would listen to somebody telling me they've been all around the world and studied religions. That's your fault. You studied a bunch of religions and you end up with nothing. Mm -hmm. You don't need to study religion to know the truth. Just believe right. Jesus. That's right. He said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. What you waiting on? Ain't no other religion said that. And some of you, you got a bozo mentality running around up in your head that don't belong to you. Mm -hmm. You try to be courteous and kind to people because they want to practice everything from homosexuality to adultery. And let's make one thing clear. Some of you that say uh, homosexuality ain't in the Bible. Well, I'll get to that in a minute. But you, you got all these kinds of things uh, running up in your mind that you feel you got to compromise with. That you feel uh, you can't say Jesus is the only way. And people can throw you off balance by saying, well, you know, Christians, they think they got it. Christians think they're the only ones that know the truth. Well, that ain't the problem. A whole lot of you know the truth. You just don't want to receive it. You know, see, God's not going to look at you like you ignorant and you dumb and you didn't know. Because if you heard and you didn't receive, then that categorizes you as disobedient. Mm -hmm. That don't categorize you as ignorant. Right. So while you spot off things and while you are listening to things, believer or Christian, that make you kind of timid about being bold, then you're chucking your righteousness and everything. The scripture says the righteous are as bold as a lion. 
You ain't got no business compromising with somebody that's showing you clearly they hate God. <laughs> and they don't want to obey God. And they don't want to accept God's joyful remedy for the plight that they're in. Because I don't care what they're saying about they don't believe in God. They don't believe in Jesus. They don't read the Bible. They don't think it's nothing valid about Christianity. I don't care about all of that. Neither does God care about all that. All God is concerned about is you knowing who you are. Because if you know who you are, then you stir up on the inside of you the desire to possess all that power that you were created to enjoy. Oh, I wish somebody could hear me right now. I'm telling you, you need to take this and you need to read the scriptures that, you, that were shared with you just now. Because this Bible is your document. This is your legal, eternal document into all realms and all um, eternal, eternal atmospheres that you will have to traffic and do business in. See, you don't want to look up and die and end up with a citation. Well, you ain't trafficking nowhere. You in prison. You in prison. And see, we need to cut out all the foolishness with uh, discarding the promises in this Bible. Some of you believers, you believers, you so drunk with the atmosphere and compromise and apostasy of the world that ain't nothing definite for you. And somebody that made up something as they go along. Because all these people running around talking about I'm atheist and I'm this. And uh, I'm agnostic, and I'm this, and I'm this, and, and every time somebody labels me, well, you're an agnostic and all that. Well, you know, you can say what you want, but your labeling of someone is a clear sign that you don't know yourself. I'm not going to label you, ever. I'm just going to say what the Word says about what you're saying. And see, if you say something that indicts you because the word says that that something is a particular thing well ain't nobody put that on you you put it on yourself because you accepted it and don't say God is trying to put it on you because God said it before you were even here to have anything put on you if you're a believer don't lie against the truth I know it's kind of hard because a lot of times we're not taught not to lie against the truth. A lot of times we are taught to agree with a lie, like this thing coming back to sickness. Mm -hmm. That hobo. Yeah. Sickness is broke. Sickness, yeah. I don't care what name he comes under. Tooth decay, baldness, obesity, yeah. or the big little C, cancer. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the C in Christ is bigger than the C in cancer. Jesus took cancer and got up. Jesus took whatever sin you're struggling with and got up, which brings me to my point that I was going to make a few minutes ago. You don't see homosexuality in the Bible, for some of you who are arguing that, because homosexuality is a word that came later out of the Latin language that someone used to describe sexual perversion. A man wanting to be with a man. So let's dispense of the word homosexuality since that's a point of reference for you to argue from. And let's look at the clear statements. Men with men. Working that which is unseemly, effeminate, abusers of themselves with mankind. And then let's look at the story of Sodom and Gomorrah. With some countries, the devil, the legislated against preachers preaching it. Right. They will go to jail if they preach it. <laughs> uh, it's time to stand up. Yeah, that's right. It's time to tell the devil what bus he's on, what ticket he got in his hand that he can't sell back. Wow. It's time. It's time. 
And for those of you who are hung up on the word homosexual, fornication. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's the word. Fornication. Oh yeah, I know. You thought fornication was sex outside of marriage. That's only part of it. Mm -hmm. right. yeah, no, it's sex outside of marriage. Wait a minute, what are you doing arguing? I thought you didn't believe the Bible. What are you doing arguing what fornication is? If you don't believe the Bible, and if you don't accept the Bible, how can you even say it's not in the Bible? If the Bible is not a valid book for you, who cares what's in it or not? Why do you care what's in it or not? Fornication. Sexual impurity. So that covers homosexuality. That covers some little 16-year-old Doom, tonight is the night. Doom, 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 doom. You make me a woman. Doom, doom, doom. You said you'd be gentle. Doom, doom. And I pray that you will. Mm. I love you. I know it. I ain't afraid to show it. I love you. That covers that little Negro jumping in bed with somebody that he ain't married to. It covers bestiality. And it covers women with women, and it covers men with men. It covers menage a trois. Mm -hmm. It covers masturbation. Mm -hmm. It covers all these little things that we find ourselves hung up on. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, look, when I found myself struggling with pornography, mm -hmm. and no matter how much I said I ain't going to do this no more, <clears throat> I'm like a drunk person throwing up. Once they're drunk and their belly hurting and their jaw bones hurting and their head spinning, I'll never do this again. Oh, I'll never do this again. And get sober and they drunk the next week. <laughs> when I saw how much that thing had a hold on me, how much that thing had a grip on me, mm -hmm. I needed something else to stop pulling me into that demonic influence. I hate to bust your bubble. You got your little videos and your DVDs on your online account. And, you know, you're going to check it out. You got your taco and your, you know, uh, foot fetish website. I hate to bust your bubble. But you're dealing with demons. You're dealing with a power that is taking influence over you. And making you do something that is unnatural. That's right. That's right. And so you don't do the gay thing and you not a homosexual a male messing with a male but you a male messing with a male with your hand right cause that ain't a woman with you mm -hmm. that's a male mm -hmm. I don't want to go too far in your bedroom but I'm just talking to you about the issue of knowing who you are, mm -hmm. having a clear head about this redemption that Christ did that you can't help yourself with. That's right. See, I don't want nobody getting this tape and that's it. I'm gonna stop masturbating from now on. Homie, you, you 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 no, you got the wrong thing. Accept this grace. Yeah. Accept this appointment. See, those of you who are even against the message of the gospel, you're shooting yourself in the head. Because apart from this message of the gospel, you don't have nothing. That's why you're so relentless and so angry in your deviant sexual behavior. Yeah, I said it. Deviant sexual behavior. It's time that someone who loves you and who cares about you says boldly what you're doing. I don't have to agree with you and compromise with you to love you. And you guys then trick people into that position. And I'm talking to you because gay men, I... I, I I have a special affection for them. Oh, oh, you gay now, huh? I have a special affection for them. I think the Lord loves them. I think the Lord loves prostitutes, hoes, tramps. I think the Lord loves them deeply. He died for them. But I ain't going to be fooled into compromising with you. I'm not going to be fooled into talking nice to you right. so I won't offend your little gay pride. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
for me to talk nice to you about something that's killing you is to set myself up to be destroyed by whatever I struggle with. And my remedy is not talking nice to my flesh and is not beating up my flesh. My remedy is what was done for me by the Savior. You better take Jesus. You better take him. You better take him because what he did is done and is done for good. You don't have to keep getting saved. You don't have to keep getting your sins washed away. And you don't have to worry about falling away as long as you hold on to him. He didn't forgive you for sins that you might commit five years from now. Yeah, I know preachers don't preach that. Preachers don't tell you that. But I'm only telling you what's in the word. The word says he saves to the uttermost. And it also says he is able to save once for all. For all sin, for all people, for all time. So Jesus did this sacrifice before you were even born. So you come out here flipping out your special kind of sin. Well, he got a special kind of love, according to Dean Braxton, just for you. He got a special kind of love that was made just for you and your sin. No, it ain't compromised with your sin. See, he ain't going to get the slop beat out of him looking like bloody hamburger meat on a stick and then going to be compromising with your sin. Make it fun. See, if he go through all that, you have to get something up. And he'll help you with it. Yeah, yeah. Because if you're struggling with it and you're stumbling in it, hey, that's okay. Come on, come on, come on. See, ain't none of you going to be able to bash me saying I'm phobic nothing and I hate nothing. Phobia is a fear. Mm -hmm. I, ain't, I ain't scared of nothing. Yeah. Okay, but we don't want to get it on me and you. Let's put this back on Jesus. So let me um, get another passage of scripture here. Uh, I want to go to Isaiah 55. Uh, let's go to Isaiah 55. And I want to read in Isaiah 55. <laughs> uh, why don't I start at verse 1 Can I do that? Mm -hmm. Isaiah 55 verse 1 Some of you, you know, if you got to turn this off, turn it off I know it's a little long, but quit, get, quit giving yourself excuses Quit being weak mm -hmm. Sit down and watch a, 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 a movie uh, Sit down and watch uh, something on the internet all night Mm-hmm Back-to-back -back YouTube videos and whatever other site videos you're watching. All night. And I'm, 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 look, I'm not judging you. I know about videos and stuff, okay? All right? I, I know. I know. I know. Hey, look, I'm, I'm merciful towards you. I'm understanding towards you. I'm compassionate towards you. I have like passions, okay? I know. I know. I know. But watch something that's going to help you save your life. Watch this. Verse 55, I mean chapter 55, verse 1. Ho, ho, everyone that thirsty, come you to the waters. And he that has no money, come you, buy and eat. Yea, come, buy wine and milk without money and without price. Where do you spend money for that which is not bread? And your labor for that which satisfies not. Hearken diligently unto me, and eat ye that which is good, and let your soul delight itself in fatness. Incline your ear and come unto me. Hear, and your soul shall live, and I will make an everlasting covenant with you, even the sure mercies of David. Now, David was a cold dude. The sure mercies of David. David was a cold dude. David probably did more dirt than Saul. Right. Saul was an honorable man apart from his rebellion to a word. Mm -hmm. 
that God told him not to violate. And Saul's pride caused him to violate that word and send him into the abyss. Now, I'm not comparing Saul to David because in a morals contest, David would lose. David was probably one of the most immoral men ever lived. David killed one of his trusty lieutenants and took his wife that he had already slept with and pregnated before the man was gone. Put him on the front line in an inadequate position. Sent him on a suicide mission. And the enemies come up the wall and destroy Uriah. What am I saying? The sure mercies of David, a God who looks at that kind of man and says, I love you because I know your heart toward me. I love you beyond your fleshly weakness. I love you beyond your inability to do what is right that you have demonstrated over and over again. I love you beyond the fact that you are a lustful whoremonging murderer. Some of you, you need to come to this kind of truth. And as the scripture said, ho, everyone that thirsts, come, buy without money. All of us need to come under that loving banner because we're inadequate. And buying without money is saying, I won't charge you for what I paid to redeem you. And I won't charge you for the love I give to you unconditionally, and I won't charge you for what you do wrong. All you have to do is receive me. And, and, and Christians, believers, you need to know that that's the position you sit in with God. So you can stop being beat up by the devil about how bad you're doing as a Christian, which cheats you out of your confidence for the blessing of God. That is on you. Are you hearing me? See, that's why by the time somebody is telling me, you know, I'm running an angle and I'm running a hustle because I tell people that God wants them prosperous. Let me stop and deal with you like a thug in the street for a minute. Have you ever seen me ask anybody for money? Have you ever seen me get on here and sell anything to you? Have you ever seen me tell anybody to send me tithes and offerings? Not that I'm ashamed or afraid to receive anything. I can show you in the Bible where it says a man who teaches is worthy of what people who he teaches give them. And while you're walking around here with your broke mentality, you are a clear example of someone that doesn't even understand salvation. Do you realize that salvation didn't just position you to go to heaven. Salvation positioned you to be blessed beyond Solomon. Whoa. I said it. Solomon's will made the most, the, the billionaires from the time Solomon became king to now don't have as much as Solomon had. The man's wealth was untold. There is no one. I don't care how much money they make. You can put them all together. All the debt we in. Couldn't touch Solomon's wealth. And that was an Old Testament brother. Wasn't even under the new covenant. You don't even understand salvation. If you're running around. Every time you see a preacher say prosperity. You go to looking at his jewelry and looking at his clothes and pulling out little scriptures half crippled that you don't understand yet to knock his position. You don't understand salvation because the salvation is the recovery of everything that man lost. And in case you haven't read your Bible and didn't know it, God didn't put man in the garden broke needing to get a loan for his car or needing to pay taxes on something or Having to buy gold that's mixed with nickel and copper. Having to buy gold from some thieves. Right. God put man in this earth with gold all over the place. Mm -hmm. And it's not this mixed up stuff like I'm wearing now. It was pure gold. Mm -hmm. Every precious stone, 
Adam had him at his disposal, and had Adam had not fall fell, he just would have transferred that to you. While you running around here sitting addicted to the fall, yeah. sitting connected to the fall and waylaid and knocked in the head by the fall, that you don't understand. God wants you wealthy. Yes. He wants you prosperous. Yes. Read the Old Testament and you can see that. Yeah. And then it's in the New too. Mm -hmm. Identity, my brothers. Don't get mad. Receive the truth and get glad. Identity. Identity. He goes on to say, I have given, oh, oh I'm sorry, verse 3, incline your ear, come unto me here, and your soul shall live, and I will make an everlasting covenant with you, even the sure mercies of David. Read David's story, and you'll see how sure that mercy is. That's why your salvation ain't got nothing to do with you. Ain't got nothing to do with how good you're doing. Some of y'all quit believing you're not going to get your healing because you messed up. Mm -hmm. Don't let nobody on TV discourage you because you didn't send them any money or you didn't keep up a pledge. And, and, and whatever you do with some man of God, I'm not attacking nobody. As a matter of fact, men of God that are prospering physically and everybody can see they're prospering. They got G9s and jets and suits and all that. Whatever God has brought into their lives... That's what I do. Huh? Huh? Why? Let, let me ask you something, Christian. Why is it so easy for you to go to a basketball game, go to a basketball game and watch somebody run up and down the court with sweaty butts and jock straps squeezing the genitals, making millions of dollars for putting a ball in a hoop? And you'll buy a ticket, and you'll root for your team, and you'll buy a jersey, and you'll buy a cap. But a man giving people the words of life, he better not have a $60,000 nothing. There's something wrong with that. Now you can pull out any kind of scripture you want. But you're going to have to do something with the psychological and spiritual and emotional dishonesty of that view and that position. You will go to a, a gospel concert in a minute. Mm -hmm. See the gospel singer pull up in a in a uh, Rolls Royce. You will go to a, a a concert or a basketball game, as I said, a football game or a baseball game. You will have a Super Bowl party. Be can't wait to get out of church to watch these men that are making millions of dollars for doing nothing. Doing nothing. Men who are making millions of dollars for knocking each other in the head. Punch drunk. Uh, can't even talk later on in their life. And you will watch them. And you will root for them. I ain't knocking you. I like sports. I grew up in a family of boxers. Second cousins. Light heavyweight champion of the world. Look him up on the internet. Bob Foster. I kind of look like him too. Uh, uh, hey, and then you will jam up a preacher because he is wealthy and well to do. The Bible I read says, Don't judge another man's servant, God is able to make him stand. You're not the one, and you're showing how much you don't understand about salvation. Yeah, that's a little tidbit for you because you know. I had to step away from my messages of prosperity. But I'm going to tell you now, when I'm preaching who you are in Christ, when I'm preaching that all your sins are forgiven, I'm preaching prosperity. Yeah. See, I don't dissect the blessings of God in the categories. Oh, you're a faith teacher. Oh, you're a prosperity teacher. No, I preach the gospel of the kingdom. Yeah. It's a complete gospel. Not subject to your interpretation. And not afraid of being accused of being anything. Jesus said you would receive a hundredfold now in this time. Houses, this time. mothers, yeah. fathers, yeah. sisters, brothers, lands. Yeah. If you forsake all and follow yeah. me. He said you would receive yeah. a hundredfold. He didn't say if you tithe. 
He didn't say if you get it. People using uh, the scripture of the gospel of the kingdom of God and they're using hundredfold to say you can get a hundredfold return on your money. Hey, <laughs> do what you will. I don't see that in the Bible. Okay, but quit chunking rocks at me. Quit chunking your poverty rocks at me, your religious, broke, crippled, cross-eyed scriptures at me when you see me talk about the blessing of the Lord maketh rich and have no sorrow to it. I go sit around and be broke with you. That's why I block you from my page. You coming up here with that poverty message that is a clear example that you do not understand the gospel of salvation. The gospel of the kingdom. It covers everything about your life. Come and buy without money, he says here. Now, I'm going to skip on down. You read that in between because it's a lot that supports your identity. Now, I'm going to skip down in Isaiah 55. And I'm going to go to verse 10. Verse 9. Mm, verse 8. <laughs> Let the wicked, verse 7, let the wicked forsake his way, <laughs> and the unrighteous man his thoughts, and let him return unto the Lord, and he will have mercy upon him, and to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. Now look. Thank you. Abundantly. Forsake your wicked thoughts. We always take that to mean quit thinking about bad things. Let me tell you what a wicked thought is. A wicked thought is that you can do something to save yourself. A wicked thought is that your salvation is contingent on your performance. Your blessing is contingent on your performance. I'm not against people prospering. I'm not against people receiving wealth from God. But yes, I'm against people encouraging people to give to get. Yes. I'm against people encouraging people that if you sow more, God can bless you with more. Mm -hmm. Because here, they don't want to say that. Here it says, come and buy with our money. And here it says, forsake your wicked thoughts. And see the mercy of the Lord, for he will abundantly pardon. Now let me tell you clearly what that means. Your wicked thoughts are those thoughts that have you trying to work your way to please God. And he will abundantly pardon you if you forsake that thinking and receive this blessed message that you are saved without money. You can prosper without money. And he ain't mad at you prospering. And most importantly, your sins are forgiven. And he has mercy on you, even the sure mercies of David. Stay with me now. Stay with me now. Wake up. Verse 6. Verse 5. Behold, they shall call a nation that thou knowest not. I'm sorry. Behold, you shall call a nation... That you knew not, and nations <clears throat> that knew not you shall run unto you because of the Lord your God and for the Holy One of Israel, for he has glorified you. He has glorified you. He has glorified you. Verse 6 Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call you upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts and let him return unto the Lord and he will have mercy upon him and to our God for he will abundantly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts than your thoughts. Now let me park here for a minute. There are some of you, you have a problem with people who have offended you and you have adjusted your life to be away from that offense and I don't blame you because forgiveness does not always mean that you are back in certain standings with people. But there is something that I am afraid of for you. You judge a person by their mistakes. And you don't realize when you do that, you put yourself in that same prison 
that you think they're in. See, a person could have done something to offend you, but they could have made peace with God. They could have even made attempt to make peace with you, which God asked them to do. But if you don't forgive them, guess what? You don't hold them anywhere. You cause the body of Christ to suffer because wherever there is lack in the body of Christ, and unforgiveness is an expression of lack. Unforgiveness is an expression of poverty. And you just keep on functioning in that and you'll see. It's a spiritual expression of poverty. Wherever there's unforgiveness, there's lack in the body of Christ. But now the person that you were holding in your mind, that's the only place they are. I heard a preacher say, uh, Pastor Jeffries, that uh, holding on to unforgiveness is like just holding on to a rattlesnake. And letting it just keep pss, biting you, pss, biting you, pss, biting you. You know, uh, you holding the rattlesnake and you getting bit. And the rattlesnake is just wiggling and wiggling and biting you and filling you with venom. And you keeping yourself in a prison. It's like holding a rat and just getting bit by a rat. You ain't doing nothing to that rat, just holding him. And if you don't get rid of that rat, you're going to keep getting bit. You're going to be contaminated. You're going to have rabies and whatever else that rat got. Well, that's what unforgiveness is like. And see, you have to learn how to let your thoughts be like God's thoughts. Because see, it's going to really trip people out when you start seeing who God is favoring. Mm -hmm. okay. Now I'm going to give you a piece of advice. You got anybody you holding anything against, you might want to reconsider that. Because see, I can guarantee you, whatever you're thinking about their sin, you're not lined up with God. you lined up with Satan. God does not wear the sweatshirt accuser of the brethren. Satan does. That's right. And see, God knows the brethren have sinned. That's why he sent Jesus. Mm -hmm. But Satan is the one who tries to hold the brethren to something that the Lord has forgiven them for a long time ago. Remember, like we said, before you were born, forgiveness was in place. And long after you were born, it'll still be here to the utmost, all times, all people, all sins. That's Jesus. Yeah. Able to save, does save, has saved to the utmost. Totally free in Jesus. Scott free. Yeah. Understanding this releases the power to be blessed in the earth. Men have been able to manipulate it. Why do you think the debt system is so strong? If men can keep you in debt, never mind what the Old Testament said about the consequences of going into debt. Some of these debts you got in, <clears throat> excuse me, even though you heard what the implications of debt were, you didn't know fully what they were. You didn't. You didn't know the full implications of debt, even though you heard about it. You didn't know, okay? And God is not holding that against you. Men try to hold you in debt because if a man can hold you in debt, he can ruin your whole life. And see, this is why we need to come together as believers under the truth. We got to put a stop to this stuff that's happening in the earth. Yeah, that's true. You got to stop this. We got to stop. See, while you sitting around having a good time and uh, doing whatever you do to make sure you prosper, mm -hmm. you are not looking at things from the, the vantage point of the Lord. And you can forsake your thoughts and get his ways and his thoughts. See, God is concerned about how we bear one another's burdens. Well, that's his fault. He got in a debt. He shouldn't have got in a debt. You know, he shouldn't have got in a debt. Why? I wonder how would we be, what kind of fix we would be in if the Lord said that about all of us. Because with where we fell to and how we were born sinners, we did worse than got into debt. I wonder if Jesus would start taking credit scores when he got on the cross. Checking people's credit scores when he got on the cross. Checking people's credit. Checking how many bad decisions people made when he got on the cross. Forsake your thoughts. Forsake your thoughts. But <clears throat> here we go. Verse 8, for my thoughts are not your thoughts, of Isaiah 55. Your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, said the Lord. 
For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. For as the rain comes down, and the snow from heaven, and returns not thither, but waters the earth, and makes, a, and, and makes it bring forth and bud, that it may give seed to the sower, and bread to the eater, so shall my word be, that goes forth out of my mouth, it shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing whereunto I sent it. For you shall go out with joy, and be led forth with peace, and the mountains and the hills shall break forth before you into singing, and the trees of the field shall clap their hands, instead of the thorns shall come up the fir tree, and instead of the briar shall come up the myrtle tree, and it shall be to the Lord for a name, for an everlasting sign that shall not be cut off. Your prosperity, your fruitfulness in the earth is a sign to the Lord, and it's a sign of the Lord in the oh, earth. Lord. It's a sign of the Lord in the earth. So you have to prosper. You have to be blessed. You have to come out of that situation that is destroying your morale, that is trying to take your loved ones, that is making your sons and daughters wayward. You have to be victorious over that because it's a sign of the Lord's presence and love and grace and seal over you in the earth. You understand me? Isaiah 54. Verse 17, no weapon that is formed against you shall prosper, and every tongue that shall rise against you in judgment you shall condemn. Yes, this yes. is the heritage of the servants of the Lord, and their righteousness is of me, says the Lord. Now we're going to get into Romans chapter 5. I would encourage you to read it on your own time before we make another video on it. I want to cut this one now. Because uh, <clears throat> we roll in uh, past an hour and uh, I got so much more to say. But I want to give you a little time to digest this. I suggest you read it in parts. But just a last note on that passage. You look at every uh, phrase, every sentence in that passage. Isaiah 54 verse 17. And you understand this. It is God's design. To cause things that are coming against you. Yeah. It's his design to cause those things to fall at your feet. It is his design to cause arrows and bullets and legal attacks against you and financial attacks against you and physical attacks against you, attacks against your health, attacks against your reputation, even for things that you did. Yeah. Even for sins that you committed. It's God's desire and designed for you not to suffer because of them. It's God's design and desire for you to prevail over everything that has come to destroy you and to verbally judge and put to shame every person that came to put you to shame. And then it goes on to say, this is your heritage, and you are righteous because of him. Your righteousness remains today and forever. Will you say that with me? My righteousness remains today and forever because my righteousness is of the Lord. Stand up, be bold, get on this train toward the kingdom of God because the new truth that will rule in the earth it's not the new truth as far as time and eternity is concerned it's old news mm -hmm. it's the truth of the ancient of days God rules and God in you has made you a ruler I love you be blessed by the gospel of the kingdom and cause yourself to come into the authority that God created you to live in.